Hello everyone, my name is Murphy and welcome back to Black Beanie Gaming. I'm back today with another Minecraft Creative Skyscraper tutorial. If you haven't seen my previous videos, please feel free to check those out on my channel. There should be a playlist there specifically for Minecraft content. Today, we're building One World Trade Center or Freedom Tower. I've been to this building, I've been to the 9-11 Memorial, and I've got to say, the symbolism in its construction alone is remarkable. One World Trade Center. This building is not a skyscraper. It's taller than a skyscraper. These were the last two escalators to be installed at One World Trade Center. And there's a sadness. There probably won't be another job of this significance in our lifetime. The memorial is a place of reflection and remembrance and a really there's something positive in that out of such tragedy we were able to do something that is really beautiful heavy concepts aside it's actually a really simple building creative mode it's far less complicated than say the empire state building and again we're not focusing on photorealism here or downloading applications or fiddling with mods no this tutorial is a simple step-by-step -step guide for making this building on your own in creative mode over a few nights or a weekend what have you on whichever platform you choose now as with my previous video i'm going to break this down into parts and throw up some timestamps for each do bear in mind before we get started that this building has an enormous footprint on the map as I've built it, it's around 170 bricks tall. The height limit is 256 blocks from bedrock, so I definitely don't suggest building this on a mountain or a step or one of those. Anyway, let's break down how this video is going to go. Part 1, getting ready. Here's where I go over some specifics about building this type of new age skyscraper in Minecraft. We'll go over which bricks to use and the structure of the building as a whole. Part 2, the shell. I'm calling this the shell rather than walls and roofs because nearly the entirety of the building's frame will be made of glass. No need to fret though, this actually makes things simpler. Part 3, lighting and floors. Here I'll go over how I intend to bring the building to life at night and how you can make individual floors that go up the entirety of the building easily accessible by staircases. Part 4, the spire. One World Trade Center spire is iconic. It's in no way difficult but well worth paying close attention to get the details just right. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get started. Let's talk about Freedom Tower. On the outside, it's simple. A square-shaped base, a tall tower approximately five times larger than the base, and a spire somewhere between a fourth and third of the overall height. But look a little closer and you'll see something that makes the building subtly complex. The building isn't rectangular, it's triangular. The roof of the building is indeed square when viewed from above, but it's offset by 45 degrees from the square-shaped base. Also, the right angles of the roof are flush with the flat edges of the square base. This allows the footprint of the building to remain the same all the way up. We'll achieve this tapered offset triangular effect by building a shell consisting of eight triangles, four whose bases will be flush with the top of the base and four of which will be flush with the roof. These triangles will interlace to create the tower, their tips meeting at the right angles of both the roof and the base. Now let's talk about the parts we'll need to construct it. It's worth noting that I play Minecraft with the Natural Texture Pack applied. With that in mind, you can select any bricks you wish to complete this build. But for me, I'm going to use the family of quartz bricks. That's the Pillar Quartz Brick, Smooth Quartz Block, Smooth Quartz Slab, Chiseled Quartz Block, and Smooth Quartz Stairs. I'll also be using cyan glass blocks and panes for the tower. However, we'll use gray glass blocks for the base. For entry, I'll use iron doors and pressure plates. For lighting the interior, I'll use torches, and for the spire, I'll use beacons. When constructing the spire, aside from using some of the quartz bricks, we'll need iron bars, dark oak wood slabs, and blocks of coal. Alrighty, with all that out of the way, let's grab a snack, get a drink, get comfortable, and we'll start building this thing. We'll begin with the base. Freedom Tower's base is a shimmering metallic color and quite angular, so we're going to take some liberties and make it taper up from the ground a bit more curvaceous, so to speak. In your inventory, make sure to have smooth quartz blocks, pillar quartz blocks, smooth quartz stairs, gray glass blocks, iron doors, and a pressure plate of your choosing. The base's dimensions are a perfectly square 23 by 23 blocks. Easy enough. As always, this allows for a single brick in the very middle. 
which means our spire will have a single brick thick column in the center. We always want our bases odd numbered for buildings with a central spire. Another benefit, because the building is utterly symmetrical from any direction, especially these four quadrants, all of the instructions I give can be applied looking at any side of the building. Once we dig our base into the ground, go ahead and fill it in with smooth quartz bricks. Now find a corner. Move four spaces along the edge and place a smooth quartz brick. Place three more diagonally to the perpendicular edge. It should be four smooth quartz bricks, leaving a three by three by three triangle tip of empty space at the corner. Do so for the other three corners. Now head to any brick you placed on the base's edges, move inward along the edge by five more spaces, and place a pillar quartz brick. Then move diagonally inward and place another. Place five more bricks on top to create a diagonal pair of columns. Then place a smooth quartz brick on top of each. Repeat this process on the opposite side to create a group of four in the center, and then repeat on every other side on the structure. The end result will look like this. Between each grouping of four pillar brick columns, dead center and three spaces in from the edge, place another pillar brick, like so, and raise it by six pillar bricks. Do so between every group of pillar columns. These groups will become our doorways to get into the building. The next part is simple. Align yourself with the middle pillar brick column, and moving either left or right of it, count three spaces, and on the third space, place a pillar brick on the floor. Move three more spaces, place another. Then do so again. This most recent brick you've placed is the corner. Continue this process all the way around the inside of your building until you have a large square of pillar bricks on the floor, each with two empty spaces between them, like so. Now find the centermost brick of the base, here, and count out diagonally by three spaces from the corners. On the third space, place another pillar brick. Do this three more times to create a smaller square of pillar bricks, each five bricks apart. Now head back to those diagonal pairs of pillar columns using the smooth quartz block. Connect the tops of the two outer columns with a line of bricks, like so. Then connect the tops of the two inner columns in the same way, but add another line of smooth bricks just below it, like this. Grab your smooth quartz stair brick, make a line of stairs along the underside of it, upside down, just like this, and then do so again on the underside of the lower line between the two inner columns. This creates a nice stepped tapered effect. Now take your iron door and place one on the floor on either side of the middle column. Place pressure plates closely enough to walk through the door. Now face the doors and the center column from the inside. Using your pillars, build up the bricks to the immediate left and right of the center column until it matches its height like this. Again, face the inside of the center column. Four spaces up from the floor, place two smooth quartz bricks on the left and right of the column to connect it with the new columns you've made. On the underside of these new bricks, place stair bricks upside down, just like we did on the outside. Then, place another line of stairs upside down, seven bricks long, across the three columns and the two smooth bricks. Do the same for the other three entryways. Go on back to one of your corners. On top of the outer two bricks, place another smooth brick. Then use those to create a diagonal line of three smooth bricks, just like this. Atop this new three brick diagonal, place three pillar bricks and atop those, three more smooth bricks. Place two more smooth bricks in the spaces between the other three to create a pair of diagonal bricks, just like this. Then on top of those, two pillar columns, two bricks tall, like so. Top those new columns with a smooth brick and put another between them to create the corner. And I'll repeat this process for the other three corners of your structure. This creates an approximate curve at the base of the building, albeit a bit more exaggerated than what we see in real life. Note that everything we've built up so far should be flush, or the exact same height. Now, head to the single brick at your corner the one that you just made. Create a single column of pillar bricks, eight blocks tall, and cap it off with a smooth brick. That's nine blocks total. Do this on every corner. Now, using those smooth bricks, connect the tops of these new columns one straight line at a time. The resulting square will be the top of your base. Now this next part's pretty easy. Simply use your gray glass blocks to fill in the space between the top line of your base, down to the top of your entrance, and down the sides.
it'll take a minute or two, but this is what it'll look like once you're done. For the first floor, which is the largest floor, count up four spaces from the ground and place a single row of smooth slabs along the top half of the glass blocks. Do so all the way around from corner to corner, just like this. For each floor on up, count up by three spaces from the floor beneath you, and on the top half of that third brick, create a horizontal row of slabs all the way around. Place your final row of slabs all the way around on the top half of the smooth quartz blocks. This is the end result, the shell of our base. Now it's time to get started on the tower itself. All you really need for this section are the cyan glass blocks, the cyan glass panes, smooth quartz blocks, and smooth quartz slabs. Really, that's all. Now this may seem strange, but we'll be making the four large triangles that stem down from the roof first. The entirety of the shell here will be made of glass. But with that comes a small issue, and it's kind of obvious. Glass is transparent. Sometimes you can accidentally place two glass panes at an odd angle, and because it's set against a transparent background of the same color, not notice it at first glance. In a moment, we're gonna create several diagonal rows of glass columns, one atop the other. Each requires we place a temporary block in order to set up the next row of columns. If we use glass on glass, it'll be difficult to see which block our cursor is selecting and whether or not we've cleared the temporary blocks until we bump our head into them as we build the interior. So this is how we'll do this. When we create a diagonal row, let's say three columns, and atop that we have to create four more. What we'll do is build our columns, then place smooth quartz slabs on the inner top half of the topmost glass blocks of our columns. Next, we'll build the new row of columns, but we'll only destroy the outermost temporary slabs, leaving the middle slabs alone. The outermost slabs are destroyed to make room for glass panes that we'll be placing later while the inner slabs are kept to mark where our floors will be. With that in mind, let's get started. Take your cyan glass block and create a single glass column, nine spaces tall, at each of the four corners, just like this. Now we have to make a diagonal row of two columns above this, place slabs in the inner two sides of the topmost glass block. Atop of these, create two new glass columns, each of them nine bricks tall. Head down and destroy the slabs you made, as both will be obstructions when we later place our glass panes. Above these two new columns and set inward by one, we want three more columns, each nine bricks tall. Follow the same process as below, being sure to destroy the outermost slabs. By now, you're probably sensing a pattern. Above the row of three glass columns, you'll move in by one space and make four more, breaking the outermost slabs but leaving the two innermost. Then above that, five more columns, three slabs remaining. Then six columns, four slabs left. Seven, then five. Eight, then six. Nine, then seven. Ten, and eight. Eleven, and nine. And finally, the topmost row will consist of 12 glass columns and there will be 10 slabs underneath the inner 10 columns. Once you've built this up and it'll take a fair bit of time, you're going to follow the same exact process for the other three corners of the building. Eventually, you'll have something that looks just like this. Once your four downward facing triangles are complete, top each of the uppermost columns with a single smooth quartz brick. On the lower halves of these smooth bricks, the lower halves, use your slabs to fill in the empty space to create the roof. The reason we align the roof with the lower half is to create a nice, aesthetically pleasing bezel along the edge. Now to create the remainder of the shell. You'll notice that all the empty space between our freshly made downward facing triangles look like, you guessed it, four more triangles. All you have to do is fill in the empty space in vertical swipes, taking care not to misplace or double place any of the panes. I recommend doing this vertically, aligning your cursor with the glass and holding the ascend or descend button until everything is placed.
Once you're done, and hopefully your eyes don't hurt after placing all that glass, your shell is nearly complete. Equip your slabs and drop down to the top of the base, the lowest point of the tower proper. Facing the walls from the inside, find a corner and count up three spaces from the floor. And on that third space, make a horizontal row of slabs all the way around the interior of the glass walls, like this. Do so again, and again, and again, across the straights and the diagonals, three spaces at a time, 34 more times, until you reach the roof. This will be the result once you're finished. And now your shell is complete. Taking a look at it, you can see where all of the floors will go. And now you should have a fairly good idea of how great this building is going to look once we're done. Anyways, let's move on. This section might require the most energy, though like the rest of this build, it really isn't complicated. In your inventory, be sure to have torches, pillar quartz bricks, smooth quartz blocks, smooth quartz slabs, smooth quartz stairs, and cyan glass panes. If you've seen my previous video, you know that I love my buildings bright and shimmering come nighttime, so I place as many torches inside my buildings as I can. However, because most of our building is made of glass, it's difficult to get that cross-hatched exterior look we normally associate with skyscrapers. Our solution will be the square of pillar bricks we made down below. So with a bird's eye view of the floor, doesn't matter which side as they're all symmetrical, take a look at the pillar bricks on the floor. I'll assign a letter to the corresponding blocks in each quadrant. The four innermost columns are the A columns. They'll each be built up to reach the roof. Our four corners are the B columns. They'll each be raised by 41 additional pillar bricks, then capped off by a single smooth quartz brick. The columns to the left and right of our corners are the C columns. These eight columns will each be raised an additional 68 pillar bricks, capped off by a smooth quartz brick. The next eight columns are the D columns. These will each be raised by another 89 pillar bricks and capped by a smooth brick. Finally, the center columns between our iron doors are the E columns. These four will also extend up the entirety of the building, joining the A columns at the roof. For your convenience, here's a visual guide for you to reference. Feel free to pause, take a screenshot, do what you gotta do. Let's go ahead and build all these columns up. Next order of business is to get some light in the building. Remember that the best way to tell if your building is getting enough light inside and out is to do your lighting in the dark. Take your torches and place as many as you like anywhere you like. But if you want to follow my aesthetic, here's what I'm going to do. Face your columns on the ground floor. Count up three spaces and place torches only on sides facing inward or outward through the glass just like this. Normally I'd place torches on all four sides, but seeing as the columns are so close together, doing so would make the negative space between them feel a bit crowded, so it's best to leave them empty. And as for the B columns, I'm only placing torches on the sides facing outward through the window. A columns, however, those are the center columns, I'll be placing torches on all four sides. On the ground floor, we place torches three spaces up from the floor, but for each floor as we go up, count two spaces up from the floor so the torch you place is eye level with your character. Use the slabs along the walls as reference. Now here's where we get to why I'm lumping lighting and floors together. At a certain point, those four giant glass triangles coming down from the roof will begin to impede our buildable space inside the structure, thus cutting the outer columns off as we go up. So for now, we're going to do this a bit differently. Take your quartz slabs and face the line of slabs you made earlier. Build them out to create a floor, eventually leaving a nice 5x5 five five area of empty space in the center between your four A columns. I tend to build a nice big staircase right here in the middle that leads up to the second floor, like so. With a nice chiseled quartz trim on either side, but you can make a staircase however you like, if you want to at all. 
Once the stairway up to the second floor is done, go to the opposite side of the building and create a staircase between the D columns. Two bricks wide, like so, with a brick of empty space between it and the columns. Once done, use your slabs to create the next floor. Follow this process until you've built the floor flush with the tops of your B columns, the 15th floor. You'll notice the corners of the building are starting to get in the way. Count diagonally inward by one space from the top quartz block of each B column. Now create new pillar brick columns, each of them 18 bricks tall, consisting of 17 pillar bricks with a single smooth quartz block at the very top. Be sure to place torches on the appropriate locations up their entirety. Keep on building floors and staircases until the 21st floor, or until you create a floor flush with the top of these new columns. We aren't building new columns yet. Instead, build three more floors, complete with staircases, until you make a floor flush with the tops of our original C columns, or the 24th floor. Now, you'll notice that in the empty space between each D column is a diagonal line five spaces wide. On the third space, right in the middle between the D columns, create a new pillar brick column. These four new columns will each be 27 bricks tall, consisting of 26 pillar bricks capped with a single smooth quartz block. You'll know when you've reached the appropriate height because it'll be flush with the top of our D columns. Be sure to light them up, all four sides for these ones. Now keep building up the interior of your building until you reach the 33rd floor. Now on the 33rd floor, head over to your A columns and count outward by four spaces from both outer sides. Here, we'll make eight new pillar columns. Each of these will be 18 blocks tall, 17 pillar and one smooth quartz at the top. From this level, make sure A columns, your new columns and E columns have torches on all four sides. Keep building floors and stairs Pass the tops of these new pillars until you complete the very top floor. And there you have it, the majority of your interior. But there's one more thing I like doing. I'm going to take my glass panes, and on the floor between the A pillars, I'm going to create a sort of barrier. And with that, our interior is complete. There's only one thing left to do. It's time to build the spire. In your inventory, make sure to have dark oak slabs, iron bars, quartz pillar bricks, smooth quartz blocks, smooth quartz stairs, smooth quartz slabs, blocks of coal, and beacons. Head to one of the corners of the roof, facing toward the center, and look down. Count in by five spaces. On the fifth space, place an iron bar. Place another bar on either side for a row of three iron bars. Do this exact same thing at the other corners. Now go back to your starting point and add an iron bar a space inward from the outer two of the three original bars. Then add two more to both the right and left like so and repeat for every other corner until it looks like this. Now place iron bars diagonally in a zigzag starting inward just like this to connect all of the individual pieces. Now it should look like a ring. Repeat this exact same process until the ring is three spaces tall. Now equip your dark oak slabs. Face the outside of the iron bars from the corner of the roof. Move in and create a three space wide row of slabs on the top half of the bottom, middle, and top rows of iron bars. Just like this. Going either left or right, it's up to you, continue placing these slabs all the way around the ring of iron bars. When viewed from above, it should look like this. Now, to make the central spire, my favorite part. Equip the smooth quartz slabs and make a 3x3 three three diamond dead center in the roof. On the corners of this diamond, make four five brick tall columns of pillar quartz brick. Move in by one and do the same. Then do it again on the center space. On each of the four empty spaces of the diamond, place a beacon. Atop those beacons, 
place four smooth quartz blocks. The top brick will be level with the pillar columns. Atop the four inner pillar columns and the center pillar column, place two pillar bricks vertically, then replace the bottom brick with beacons. Now place a single smooth brick atop the smooth brick columns you made earlier, then atop each of the four outermost pillar columns, place a single smooth stair brick like so, to help conceal the beacons. Now, take your iron bars and create a single vertical line, five spaces high, on either side of the outer pillar columns. You should now have a sort of plus sign of pillar bricks at the top of this proto-spire. Now, on the center block, add 21 more pillar bricks. Go back down to the other four, and to top each, add seven more pillar bricks. A single block of coal, four more pillar bricks, another block of coal, four more pillars, another block of coal, and one more pillar brick. Look at the center column. One space above the columns you just made, replace the center brick with a beacon, then place a single stair brick on each of the four outer columns to conceal it. It'll look like this. Now go back to our smooth brick columns that we made down below. Take your coal block, Count three spaces up from the topmost smooth quartz brick. Place a short, two block tall vertical line of coal between the pillar columns. Then again on the outside of the pillar columns. The result will look like this. Now go back up to the top of what we have so far of our spire. Place another pillar brick on the center column. Then one block of coal. Place four more pillar bricks, another block of coal, five more pillar bricks, and then the final piece, place a beacon directly on top, thus completing your build of one World Trade Center Freedom Tower here in Minecraft Creative Mode. All right, everyone, I hope this guide helped you. I hope that you have as much fun building these rough approximations of famous skyscrapers in Minecraft as I do. Please feel free to comment down below what you thought of the guide, and also put some suggestions down there to see what type of building you want me to tackle next. Don't forget to like and share the video, subscribe to the channel for more content, and hit the bell icon so you can get notifications. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Murphy underscore BBG or at Black underscore Beanie. Thanks so much for stopping by today, guys. Until next time.